Hey everyone! We've just released Qt 6.8 and in this video we want to share all the great new functionality in that release but also give a bit of a background how that provides more value to you as a user. In addition to that we will also give some insights on the product layout changes and how these also will benefit you for long-lasting projects and products. Maikon, why don't you start? Hello, I'm Maikon, I'm product manager here at Qt, working with the graphics and UI area, and today I want to highlight the things that we are bringing to the 6.8 relays. First of all, I'm proud to announce the Qt graphs modules has reached its maturity and is being promoted to stable. With that, you have 2D and 3D graphs hardware accelerations. It can handle high data volumes. As well, we have redone the input handling so it's easy to use. We also had new APIs to unify the 2D and 3D style and customization, so please give a try. We had a lot of improvements on the Qt Quick desktop use cases. Now we have native top level window support, native menus, uh, dialogues. You can easily mix Qt Quick and widget solutions. We have improvements in table view and text editing and a few more things. But we also bring in new things uh, to the Qt 6.8. We have a new module called Vector Image, where you can have SVG pictures as part of a quick scene. That way, you can scale and rotate without losing quality and using less memory. We also have a big addition to the new 6.8 release with a new module called Quick 3D XR. Hey! XR stands for Extended Reality, that's why I'm holding this on my hand. Qt has a big story about cross-platforming, and with the new XR module, you can have all the OpenXR compliant devices and also Apple Vision Pro support. We have full immersive modes and also pass-through, so we can have the camera and XR content together. Controllers, input handling, hand tracking, gestures recognition, and spatial anchoring is already supported. Also, it's quite easy to add your quick 2D implementation and XR world. So yeah, please give it a try of these new things. I'm quite excited to see what we'll be creating. Hi, my name is Bruno. And I'm going to be introducing core and the platform parts of Qt. QML language server has reached a mature state and now provides code completion in Qt Creator 14. And it will be soon available in other, other code editors to improve your typing and get you faster writing the code. In the networking part, we have promoted HTTP server, protobuf and gRPC into stable releases. This means that you are going to be able to rely on those technologies in your own products. We are also bringing one of the community changes, that is the Q Chrono Timer. It has much higher precision and longer time spans than the existing Q Timer. We also vastly improved network authentication, so you are going to be able to use OAuth to have easier logins into cloud services that are your own or from the third party. Qt Web Engine can also now handle iframes and permissions. So it will pop up for uh, easy camera access on the system. Qt for Python has also improved a lot. It got much faster startup times and the footprint got much smaller. It is now also packaged in Butu Qt and it's integrated in the whole design studio workflow. In terms of platforms, we are keeping up with the latest trends. We are supporting Mac OS Sequoia and iOS 18 out of the box, as well as Windows or ARM devices. Not only that you can deploy to Windows and ARM devices, but you can also develop on them. And in terms of the embedded platforms, we are also bringing news to Qt to Android. From now on, you'll be able to integrate Qt applications into Android Studio. So for example, you can put in a 3D scene or your graphs and charts into existing Android applications and mix them with Java and Kotlin code. And that is going to be the short news uh, from the platform and core team. Hi, my name is Veli Pekka Heinonen. I'm also from Qt Product Management. My area is embedded. Uh, so in general for Qt 6.8, we have three buckets, if you will. One is the usual hardware additions. Second is the operating system updates. And third one this time is a, a performance related aspect. Starting with the hardware, we have introduced support for Raspberry 5 and also in the uh, tier 3 
category we have a bunch of new boards, most, most notably pre versions of the IMX95 board and one RISC V board also from Star 5. On the operating system front, we are providing full support for uh, VXWorks 2403, technology preview support for QNX 8.0, and usual updates for Yocto as well as uh, WebOS. In the third bucket uh, for the performance, we are introducing support for Qt configure options. Background being that many of our customers have a need to streamline their application memory footprint. And this provides one way of doing that. Uh, essentially, it allows you to strip away features and modules you do not need using configuration flags. You still do need to look at your source code, because that typically has a major impact in the application performance. But Configure Options provides you one way of streamlining your application memory footprint. Finally, we have published a couple of blog posts on the Configure Options topic. So there's loads more information for you to read. That's it from Embedded. Hi everyone, my name is Patrick Thurman and I'm the Commercial Product Manager for the Framework team. And I wanted to highlight some recent changes that are coming into effect with our long-term support version or LTS with 6.8. The first is that the LTS support will be moving from three to five years for our commercial customers. This is in response to the upcoming legislation by the EU around cyber resilience or CRA. We want to be seen as a strategic partner and already starting to kind of make the changes needed to help our customers meet the requirements as well. In addition to this, we're also planning to change the LTS cadence from 18 to 24 months, but we're still collecting feedback from our community about how that will affect them. So be on the lookout for more. Finally, we'd like to call out that the Qt Web Engine and Qt PDF modules will be moved from the LTS support, primarily due to external dependencies. So if you would like to use these with the LTS releases, they'll need to be updated separately. Thanks, guys. As you have seen, 6.8 contains many new features and functionalities which will benefit you in your existing products, but also extend towards new devices like XR headsets. The LTS-related changes will help to future-proof your products out there coming from the desktop but also going towards the embedded side. Thank you.